So that Moor tiger, when we look at what is known as the Siberian tiger, or what they try to portray as the white tiger, we understand phenom and um, the significance of dominant traits and dominant genes and recessive traits and recessive genes. We understand that the tiger, the leopard, and we look at Nimrod, the mighty hunter, and the leopard and Cush and these ancient people, and uh, when we look at Nimrod, this mighty hunter, and the use of the skins, the coat of the arms, when we look at one of the, the best hunters and stalkers of prey, and the significance of the coat of the stripes, the camouflage, when we look at the military, and David, um, great military strategist, when we look at Shiva and Solomon. Now, when we look at this Shiva, more specifically, when we look at the Sabbath, the seventh, the dwelling place, the resting place, these things align with the heavens, right? When we look at the naming of people chose names or were given certain names because of the topographical topo topographical significance of sound and the markings of landmarks to have memorials and monuments. So when we look at Bathsheba and Sheba and this ring of fire and these cats, so we understand the Queen of the South and we understand um, this bath. When we look at the bath, in the time of the baptism, when we look at the ancient Ethiopians and during this time before Lent, the time this, this period of Lent, and this time before January and this new year was a time of baptism in the Jordan, right? So we understand the significance of the Jordan and this ring of fire and this crossing when we see these ancient cats of this panthera of these Amur. We understand Amur, Amoraka, and Mu, the sunken continent. And how the floods and the ice ages and these trop tropics were so significant to give us clues of how these migrations took place. So when we look at Shiva as a swear in Shiva, and we look at David's taking of Bathsheba and this curse that was placed upon David's son, right, with Sheba from this adultery that took place, this sin. So when we see David, he sees her on this rooftop bathing. You know, this narrative, understand the naming more more significantly is what I'm focused on for this. Understand her name, Bathsheba, and the meaning of the Sabbath, the dwelling place, the resting place, the dwelling place, and the Psalms 23, right? When David says, the Lord is my shepherd, he leadeth me along the still waters. When you look at the still waters of Manoak, the resting, the dwelling place, and Sheba, Shiva, the west, the the mark, the Sabbath, and the dwelling, the resting that takes place on the Sabbath. When you look at the Pacific Ocean, it's named peaceful, resting, Shalom. So even when we look at the name of Solomon, and Shemesh, Shamash, and these sun deities, and these sun worship, the house of the sun, this birthplace of the sun. And the land of the Orient, Orion, when we understand the mighty, right, and the mighty hunter, and the skin, and the Sagittarius, in this time of the ending of the Sagittarius, the marker, the archer, the mighty hunter, bullseye, and the pole center of this Arctic circle, and sticking the pole through the center during this time of the winter solstice, and the merrymaking, and the celebration. We understand the mauler, and the peace during the time of war. Right, to these maulers and the sacrifice and the offerings and all of these blood rituals are all connected with these ancient migrations and ancient uh, teachings of these cats being maulers in times of war and significance with the topological memorials of the earth.